Suracher is a French phrase that means under erasure. I was first introduced to Suracher typography by Jacques Derrida, a French post-structuralist philosopher who came to influence in the late 1960s and 1970s. His most famous works were Speech and Phenomena, Writing and Difference, Margins of Philosophy, and his seminal 1967 work of Grammatology, upon which a lot of this podcast is based. Derrida is best known for introducing an approach to literary analysis called deconstruction, a system of thought that attempts to discover the relationship, and also power dynamics, between text and meaning. Recently, deconstruction has been operationalized in post-Christian religious trauma recovery circles, that's how I was introduced to it, as a way of increasing awareness of the connection between sacred texts and various interpersonal value systems, power dynamics, and biases. Jacques Derrida borrows the concept of writing with crossed out text, that is, under erasure, from the existential philosopher Martin Heidegger. Although Derrida's use of Suracher is slightly different, Heidegger, in a letter to a friend about the nature of being, chose to write the word being with an X through it. There's an example of this in the article that corresponds with this podcast, if you'd like to look. In an attempt to define nihilism, Heidegger explained that definitions, in general, require the addition of the concept of being, which he capitalized to emphasize the uniqueness of his understanding of the word being. But then, of course, to Heidegger, the subsequent question arose, what to do about the being that presupposes the definition of being? How do you define being without understanding the being that is needed to define it? Heidegger was left with one solution. A thoughtful glance ahead into this realm of being can only write it as being, printed with an X through it. The drawing of these crossed lines at first only wards off especially the habit of conceiving being as something standing by itself. Getting lost in Heidegger's definition of being is topic for another podcast completely. But suffice to say that by printing the word with an X through it, Heidegger was suggesting that there was more to the concept than what was communicated by the word alone. This set the stage for Jacques Derrida's use of Suratra text. As mentioned before, Derrida's usage is a bit different. Derrida's grammatology centers around the exercise of viewing any symbol, be it a printed word or a spoken word, as an instance of difference, a comparison of one thing to another. Symbols and concepts signify something, but at the same time, they signify what they are not. The nature of a symbol is determined by its relationship of difference to something else. In the introduction to my copy of Of Grammatology, written by Gayatri Spivak, it's put this way. Such is the strange being of the sign. Half of it is always not there, and the other half always not that. The structure of the sign is determined by the trace or track of that other, which is forever absent. Here's a captivating example that demonstrates Derrida's writing under erasure and also helps set up my later discussion on the psychotherapeutic implications of thinking under erasure. Derrida writes in Of Grammatology, citing directly from Freud but adding his own erasures, the ego treats recovery, under erasure, itself as a new danger, under erasure. You'll have to forgive the clumsy nature of speaking about Suratra text rather than just reading it on the page as a word with a line through it. But back to the example. When you read recovery, under erasure, or danger, under erasure, you are prompted to consider what the word does not mean, or what it does not symbolize. You may begin to think about antonyms, origins, associations, or what was there before the symbol was used. Writing under erasure also has a way of lifting the word off the page, reminding the reader that the words, strings of words, or even the gaps between the words, are just symbols of a much deeper, richer concept. This is the thought exercise of deconstruction, and it can lead to insights into the meta-connotations of language as it functions in your social or inner world. 